Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'd like to show you my three favorite new features in Swift 5 and to see a full list of improvements um, of Swift 5 and to accompany the whole evolution of Swift. Um, you can always check out the Swift Evolution repository on GitHub. There you will also find tons of info about this great new feature in Swift 5 which was also the primary focus which is ABI stability or application binary interface stability is actually is really awesome because it means that your code that you write today will still work in two years or in other words future Swift releases will be binary compatible with Swift 5. But before we look at my favorite new features, I'd like to give you a quick preview of my next Udemy course which is all about server-side code with Swift and Vapor. In this course, we're going to create the application that you see on the right, which lets you write down very interesting quotes, which will be stored in a web-based Postgres database. And on the left, you have a very simple app called Rested, uh, which allows us to make API or HTTP calls. And here, as you can see, if I... Uh, complete the URL here with quotes and send the request, uh, we get a nice little JSON response here also with the incredible quote that we just wrote in the application. Um, and we are also going to build this API that lets us perform different requests. We're going to be able to uh, create users, log in users, uh, sign up users, and we will also have a web application with the same capabilities as the iOS application. Everything built with Swift in Xcodes. So this is going to be really, really cool. And I hope that you're also looking forward to this course. And if so, and if you do not want to miss it, make sure to hit the link in the video description below. There you can enter your email address. That way I know how many people are going to be interested in this course and you will get um, the information about the release immediately. And also you will get a coupon code to get the course for just $9.99 instead of the selling price on Udemy. But now let's have a look at my three favorite new features in Swift 5. And therefore I have prepared a little playground so you can just um, create a new playground, name it, whatever you want. And then we can also get rid of all of the template code here and just import foundation because that's all we really need. And the three features that I'd like to share with you are new string capabilities, um, the ability to test integer or test for integer multiples, and a cool new result type that is really useful for, let's say, asynchronous API calls. But let's start with the cool new strings. So let's create a new constant, call it cool new string. And I've prepared a little string here that we can just paste, which says the keyword var is used to declare a variable. And as you can see, var is inside quotes, which is a problem because we had to use, um, until Swift 5, we had to use escape sequences to actually add a quote within our string, but no longer. What we can do is just add a hashtag before our string and at the end of our string. And if we have a look at the output, then you can see that a keyword var is used to declare a variable and we have our quote signs. So very cool, very simple. But that's not all. What we can also do is we can create new multi line strings very, very easily just by using again, a hashtag and three quote signs and do it the other way around to end this. And now what we can do is just paste another text. And as you can see, once I do that, uh, we get a very cool uh, multi-line string uh, that we can display here in our playground. And it has indeed the page breaks or the line breaks exactly where I added them in my code. But what if I wanted to use string interpolation 
in such a string. What I can do here is, and I'm just going to add that, uh, let's maybe remove this piece here and add a string um, interpolation element with cool new string here. And this does not work. But all we have to do now is use a backslash, a hashtag, and then we can just use a parentheses and add our variable that we'd like to use here. And as you can see, once I run this, uh, we get um, available in Swift 5 and then the keyword var is used to declare and so on. So this is how you use string interpolation in a multi-line string using the new string capabilities in Swift 5. But now let's have a look at testing integer multiples. And you might now think, well, uh, testing if let's say we have x equals two and we have y and assign 10. And let's say we want to find out if 10 is a multiple of two. Indeed it is. But even numbers, for example, are multiples of two. And if we wanted to find out if a number is even, like 10 or 12 or 16, um, then we could just check if they're a multiple of two. Two, and by that find out if they're even or odd numbers. This is something that you might do frequently. Or um, more generally, multiples arise throughout mathematics and everyday life. So it is great to have an easy way to actually check if a number is a multiple of another. So we can check if y is a multiple of x. And if that is the case, let's just say we print um, uh, using string interpolation here, uh, y is an even number. And by that, we have a simple mechanism that we can use to check if 10, for example, is an even number. But if we add 9 here, we shouldn't get any result here in our output, and indeed we don't. So a very simple mechanism, very simple um, Swift feature that we have here that can be very powerful depending on what you want to do. Now, let's have a look at this new result type. And what I'd like to do here is indeed make a make an API call to the iTunes API and search for something. So let's create a function here. Let's call it search iTunes with a search string, which is just a string. And now we come to the interesting part because we have to react uh, based on what we get from iTunes, from the API. So we need a completion handler here that is escaping this scope of this function. And what we can do now here, or what we often did in the past, was defining our own um, results enumeration, for example, or defining our own result type. But now what we can do is using the standard result and also defining what we return, for example, an integer in our case, because I'm interested in the bytes that we are receiving from, um, from the iTunes API. But you could define whatever you want here. Maybe the results or a JSON code or, um, a, a, a your own type that includes all the information um, that iTunes gave you. And what we can also do here is add our own um, error type or our own error enumeration that could be quite useful. So I'm using an enumeration right above my search iTunes function. Just give it one case, let's say no data. And I can then use this error type in uh, my result that we um, give back in our completion or that we return in our completion handler, uh, which would be now the iTunes error. And then we don't want to return here anything, so let's add void. And this now is our search iTunes function. And all we need to do here is define a search URL string. Um, therefore, I have the iTunes API string right here, uh, which is just itunes.apple.com. It is a secure HTTP connection. And all we have to do here um, is use the search endpoint with a term that we can um, use here using string interpolation, again, with our search uh, string, search string, not search URL string. And um, with that, we have 
a URL that we can call, but we still need to convert this string to a resource URL, for example, just initializing that with URL from a string using the search URL string. And if this does not work, then we can't really continue and we can throw a fatal error here. And now um, we need to create a data task because now we want to retrieve data from this uh, URL or from what we get from the server here. So let's define a data task using a URL session, shared session, and the data task with a URL that we've just created. This is the resource URL. And what we get back is, for example, a data object. And we are not interested in the other two return objects or the other two objects that are returned here from this function. And now we can indeed check if we have received data. And we are interested if we have received data and want, also want to know how many bytes we actually received. So I'm using another guard let, a let statement here to create an iTunes data object and just assign the data that was returned from the um, data task that we have performed. And if we do not get data back, so if this is nil, we can call our completion handler and tell it that we indeed have a failure in our task. And the uh, result type that we now have with Swift 5 allows us to have this standard, re standard result type with a failure and a success case. And in case of failure, I can now also add my no data error to be more specific about what really happened here and return and do not continue with this function. But if this all went well, and if I have received my iTunes data and this was now unwrapped, then I can actually also call my completion handler, but this time with the success case and I can uh, return um, what I actually wanted, which is the integer that we have defined here in our completion handler definition. So we have a result with an integer or an iTunes error. In this case, for the success case, um, I can uh, return my iTunes data and just the count, which is the number of bytes we have in this data object. And now all that is missing is that we really use our data task and start it or use the resume function. And with that, we have a working call to an API that we can use. Um, we could also actually name that some interesting server side code that we are not really interested in. We are mainly interested in the completion handler using the result type and calling this completion handler here with the two new cases that we can now check for and that we can now use. So I want to search iTunes. Now I'm using my function. I'm searching with a string, let's say uh, sky. There must be a song that includes sky. And uh, then we can just add our completion closure with our result. And now we can switch through this result. And we have two cases, actually. The first one is success. And what we get here is a number of bytes constant that we can uh, work with. And we don't need a default case, but what we also need is a failure case. And in that case, we get an error object. And since this is all just for demo purposes, in case of success, we just print the search returned a specific number of bytes. And um, once we have a failure, we just print the error and it's localized description to see uh, what kind of results we get. So now I'm just performing this and uh, allowing the request. And as you can see, we get quite a bunch of bytes here uh, from our request. And if I maybe misspell the URL and just do this again, um, we will get a message that the operation couldn't be completed, uh, which is the error that we have received here. So we can work with both success and we can work with failure and this nice result type 
um, in Swift 5. I think this saves a lot of time. And this is actually my list of favorite features that were added. What do you think about Swift 5? What is your favorite feature that I might not have mentioned? I thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe to not miss any future tutorials and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!